Hello everybody, this is uh, General Yanis, and today in Death Car Tactics I will be returning to one of the favorite subjects, uh, popular subjects, the Plague Marines, and this is a part two following up on the a lot of questions uh, I got from the first part with the extensive review. So in this in this uh, video we'll be focused on the buffs and the weapons, uh, how the characters, for example, can buff the Plague Marines, and uh, also analyzing the effect of the Sigil of Decay, uh, which um, which seems like a very popular weapon out there, but let's see what it actually does when we do the math. So let's get started. So uh, today, the 26th, my codex has finally been dispatched by the retailer and it's on its way. Praise Nurgle. Uh, and I hope now that it can safely get past the, the gauge of the Officinum Customs Arium. So I, I hope the custom agents uh, of the Imperium don't confiscate <laughs> this, this shipment. Uh, and uh, following up on the Plague Marines, of, it seems like a 48-minute video full of math is not enough to cover all questions about the Plague Marine weapons. This shows a little bit the complexity of having so many weapon options and so many roles, and, and for, a, for a unit that's probably one of the main uh, parts of the army and that can be buffed in so many ways. So here comes a part two that will focus on um, how can we buff the what synergies and what can we do to buff the damage of the Plague Marines, the effect of Virions, of course, in uh, the, the, for example, the Taliban and uh, Biologus Putifier, how can they affect the, the Plague Marines? And then uh, also adding the grenades because I, I typically tend to forget them. But first and most importantly, what about the Sigil of Decay? Is it the, the table, the stuff that tabletop dreams are made of, or is it just a, a trinket, um, a worthless trinket that that pro prevents you from taking one equally costed blight launcher or flay? So, with no further ado, let's take a look. So, uh, recapping very quickly uh, the Plague Marine uh, war gear options. This is a significant change to how it works today. So, basically, now we can have uh, Plague Marine squads from five to ten. If we have below than 10 Plague Marines in the squad, we can take maximum of one of, of, the, of, of the most of the special weapons they have. And we have uh, the, the Plasma, the Melta, and the Plague, the Plasma Gun, the Melta Gun, and the Plague Belcher are maximum uh, one in this group. But you could take, for example, if you have a squad of seven, you can take a Blight Launcher, a Plague Spewer, one of these, you can take a Flail Corruption, you can take a Bibotic Axe, and so on. So you can, you can make that let's say more diverse squads, but you cannot maximize like today where you had, for example, two, two Blight Launchers already at, at a squad of five. When you go up to a squad of 10, you can take maximum two of, 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 uh, of each of the weapons. Uh, this group, of course, is two of those, or you could take one Plasma Gun and one Melta Gun, for example, if you have 10. Uh, and in this group, uh, you cannot take two Blight Launchers and two Plague Spewers, uh, for some reason. Um, on top of this, the champion can take a plasma gun. Um, for example, he can also take a plasma pistol and a bolt pistol, and he can take a power fist, but I covered that in my previous video. So in addition to these uh, war options, and you can see a uh, marine equipped how much he would cost. In addition to this, the squad can take a sigil of decay for 10 points. So basically something that is buffing them. So it says that each attack with a bolt weapon by the unit on a six to hit unmodified wounds automatically. So basically you skip the wound roll, but of course the, the boulder still is a damage uh, AP zero weapon normally, and then the opponent can do the save rolls uh, in any case. But you, you, you can bypass the wound roll, so you will be being more effective, but remember it's only the sixes to hit, uh, not all, all hit rolls. So in a, in a, with 20 shots from 10 boulder guys, you would assume three or four would have a six to hit on average, and then those wounds will be automatically wounding. So let's uh, let's keep this in mind. In addition to this, a squad can also take an icon of despair for ten points, and this um, is quite interesting. In your morale phase, you roll a d6 for each enemy unit in engagement range. On a four plus for these units, you can give them one mortal wound, and this could be good on a on a melee. Um, Plague Marine squad that you intend of uh, engaging, charging to the opponent, maybe tie up a few units, and it doesn't it doesn't hurt to have something uh, that can that can give some mortal wounds. Uh, it's not like game changing, but it could be interesting for a melee squad, but not for a squad you intend to keep in the in the background or middle objectives where you don't believe they will see a lot of uh, melee action. 
and all of them, all of marines have of course the grenades on top of, of these weapons so very quickly recapping the ranged weapons comparison at long range uh, i will not go into this detail it was more covered in the previous video basically we have the, the standard bolter uh, is not as efficient as some of the other weapons. For example, the plasma gun, supercharged, and the blight launcher is the best. Uh, the blight launcher is clearly the best weapon, most damaging weapon um, at, at long range. And then recapping the ranged weapons at 12 inch range. Uh, at 12 inch range, we have a lot of weapons that now can also do damage. So we have uh, the melta gun, the plague spear, and the plague belcher. Uh, on on the, on the plague spewer and the plague belcher, we can see that the plague spewer, the green, is always doing more damage than the plague belcher uh, per points, even if the plague belcher is a bit cheaper. So basically, if you want to do damage with this flamer, it's better to take the the plague spewer. The melta gun, um, the 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 light blue here, is doing good damage against uh, vehicles and uh, this type of targets here with with high toughness. And uh, the the plasma gun is uh, better um, at this range because it has two shots and you can see the bolter is uh, quite at the bottom so uh, so the bolter as a ranged weapon is not very uh, it's quite underwhelming and that there are a lot of better options but of course it's the cheapest cheapest option and then recapping quickly the weapons uh, in melee uh, also much more covered in my previous video we see uh, the knives uh, that the standard uh, the standard marine is equipped with is at the bottom. If you get you double knives, you get one more attack, so you uh, you you get the orange line. And then the best weapon for melee is the flail, costing ten points more. Uh, so here you see the the, the average damage corrected for points, so it does consi considerably much more damage than the than the knife uh, version. So it's in my opinion. You, it's, it's really worth considering taking the flail and the plate cleaver for 10 points more. You add a lot of extra uh, damage uh, in, in melee combat. So you have here the, the flail uh, and the green one is the cleaver. The cleaver is quite good and complements the flail uh, against uh, multi-wound targets and vehicles uh, like you can see here. So, um, so, so basically, First of all, let's start about the squad loadout considerations. Uh, as I tried to say also in my previous video, the most durable Plague Marine squad will be made uh, with keeping, let's say the most durable squad is where you don't upgrade any weapons. You just pay the 21 point cost and you get two wounds each with a toughness five and a disgusting resilience. It gives you the baseline, the reference durability. I have also looked at that comparing them to Space Marines in my previous videos. If you add the special weapon, you are basically making the squad uh, less durable. So a special weapons plague marine is basically can take the same number of shot, but now it, it is costing more. So it's costing 50% more, 31 points. So the durability, of course, suffers a bit when you take the, the special weapons, but the damage can be increased much more than that, maybe twofold or, or, or even higher in some cases, as we saw on the previous tables. So uh, let's consider, at least this is my, my point of view, that we, how can we get our Plague Marines to do more damage per points, and maybe sacrificing a little bit durability per points. After all, the war, uh, Warhammer is a war game and not a picnic, even if it's good to stay at objectives, but we can also, uh, uh, making more damage helps you also win the game, removing threats from your opponent and increasing your, your durability in that, in that respect. So in my opinion, how I view the things, the special weapons that we can take are a great way to enhance the damage output of our Plague Marines. And because we have so many different types of weapons and now we can mix and match even more than we could before, it's a nightmare to do the math, but it's good to, to, to optimize uh, for, for different roles. So for example, we could make uh, some squads really for shooting, taking Blight Launchers and Plasmas, uh, if we want to have melee squad, we can take the flail and the cleaver. We can put them in a rhino. We can we can put also axes and double knives, etc. We can also make a combination of a melee and mid-range shooting squad. For example, we can take the plague spewer, the melta, uh, flail, etc. 
we could also make an all-round squad that has both the best of both worlds um, some some blight launchers some flails maybe plasmas you can you can you can you can play around a lot here um, and 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 do much more than the standard squad in damage of course always sacrificing uh, some some durability because you could have more models uh, with these points on the on the board so the durability as i said is lower but you should be able to with upgrading the weapons you should be able to clear out enemies faster helping the durability in the long run because you you might take out a unit of hell blasters before they or take out several of those before they shoot you back in another school of thought that i see a lot in the forum uh, there is a lot of debate that people are saying it's be just better to just keep the bolters and the knife and then put the sigil of decay and then you have a wonder uh, wonderful weapon or use some this and this stratagem or this and this buff or this and this character and in my opinion um, the buffs and and the stratagems normally can be applied uh, with even better effect many times to the special weapons as well so if we just get for example veterans of the long war or eternal hatred as is as it's called right now it's not only helping the standard bolters it's also helping all of the other all of the other guys as well and it could be even more helpful for some of those uh, so and and that and and when i look at the math at least it seems to me that the bolter even when you add a lot of the buffs and stratagems and you pay command points and you, and you have this is still underwhelming you can add buffs to the bolter but it will never it will basically never be able to do the same as as the the blight launcher for 10 points more so let's uh, look at uh, some data so let's start analyzing the sigil of decay the sigil of decay as i said is 10 points so let's take a reference case 10 plague marines just standard bolters a knife no sigil uh, no no sigil of decay they cost 210 points uh, and then you have a, the, the group where you add the Sigil of Decay. So basically you take the 10 Plague Marines and you give them the Sigil of Decay. You get for 220 points. And then in this one I say, okay, let's instead of taking the Sigil of Decay for 10 points, let's add one Blight Launcher, keeping the rest, nine of the guys as a standard. We are still having the same point cost. So we have exactly the same durability in these squads. You have the same number of wounds for the same number of points. So which one will be making most damage? And then in the squad, uh, in this squad, I'm sacrificing one. Uh, I'm taking out one of the Marines from the 10, 10 squad uh, and giving them uh, one Blight Launcer and two Plasmas. The champion has one of the Plasmas. That's why this is allowed. So here we basically sacrifice two wounds out of the 20 wounds in the group. So we sacrifice 10% of our durability for the same number of, uh, of, of wounds, uh, uh, for the same number of points, basically, as we have here. But we get three special weapons uh, to increase our damage. And then finally, if we, if we maximize uh, 10 Plague Marines and maximize, let's say, the, our range damage with two Blight Launchers and three Plasmas, this is possible, for example, on a 10 Plague Marine group. So here we keep the 10 Marines uh, to be able to maximize the number of special weapons. Uh, Com comparing the durability to the special case here basically we have the same 20 wounds on the table uh, but we paid uh, 30 percent more so in this uh, in this case we would be um, we would be having um, yeah uh, less durability in, in this case but we can be able to do uh, quite more damage as i will show you later so let's compare these squads uh, and i'll go into more detail for this graph so basically here I have a bunch of different targets, starting with uh, very uh, tough targets uh, that have very high invul saves, like Gilliman, for example, with three plus invul saves. Here, these targets have four plus invul saves, five plus invul saves, and then all these targets here, they just have the normal armor save. So here you can find, for example, intercessors and aggressors. And then you, you can see for this group here that have a three plus base armor save, the toughness increases going from from left to right and this is the same for all groups the toughness is increasing and for some of the um, yeah and some of the um, opponents for example here the tau fire warriors they only have one wound and uh, and uh, and and some of some of the some of them have two wounds or three wounds and multi wounds and this can affect 
which weapons are the best. For example, shooting a two damage weapon or a D6 weapon on a one wound target is not very efficient. Uh, so you, with, but, but for some of these very toughness targets, maybe the, the low strength weapons cannot do uh, as much. So this gives somehow an idea, a flavor of how the unit would perform versus a variety of targets. So let's uh, start the, the baseline squad with uh, no sigil and just 10 bolter guys is the blue line. And, um, and we can see with the orange is what happens if we add the Sigil of Decay. So the, the Sigil of Decay helps the, the standard boulders uh, to do a little bit more damage. Yes, and I have to say that the damage here is averaged to 100 point squad. So it's taking uh, yeah, everything is normalized to 100 points. Uh, so we can see that against most of the targets, the Sigil of Decay is actually helping, but not, uh, not, not super, uh, super much here. And we can see with the gray line is if we didn't take the sigil of decay and we took a blight launcher. So in this case, the gray line is always higher than the orange line. So basically the blight launcher gives us uh, better, uh, better damage against uh, basically everything for the same 10 points. So, so for me, this debunks the, the theory that the, the sigil of decay is such a wonderful uh, idea to to add and that it it transform your bolter guys to to much more damaging of course it will help you 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 but it's only for sixes to hit and it's still an, a normally an ap0 weapon and of course you can add more buffs on top of this but the same can be said with the blight launcher and i will get back to that so you the blight launcher squad with all the additional buffs you wanted to put on top that would also be buffed uh, equally basically so uh, and if we take the squad where we just dropped one marine to take um, more special weapons one blight launcher and two plasmas here supercharge basically you get the yellow line so basically by doing that uh, you sacrifice one marine you get almost twice the damage out of this group and then investing more in the squad does even more damage per point but we in this case we paid uh, let's say 40 40 points more if we have the two blight launchers and the three plasmas but we get yeah even more even more damage but we are paying quite yeah we're, we're paying something that we could use also for something else but but this would maximize our our range damage here so uh, summarizing the sigil of decay so in in order to compare a little bit better because now we have a lot of targets and a lot of lines here I, I just tried to take the average damage that they were doing across all targets, so uh, uh, per hundred points. So basically, each each line that you saw before just becomes one value here. So we can see here the standard uh, plague marines are doing 1.2 average damage per hundred points in the previous with with these targets I have selected arbitrarily, let's say. Uh, and if we take the sigil of decay, we ha we have a little bit of improvement. But when we take the blind launcher, we get a better improvement. If we take the squad with one blind launcher and two plasmas, suddenly we are making much more damage and even more damage when we have the two blind lords and three plasmas and everything is um, per hundred points. So in my opinion, and with this math uh, analysis at hand, there is no point in taking the sigil of decay uh, only and not take special weapons. If you take the special weapons, you can still add the sigil of decay if you want. But I guess for me, it's it's clearer that it's better to just take a blight launcher for the same 10 points to increase the squad damage output, or even better to do something like this and take even more special weapons, uh, just losing one marine here in this comparison. And keep in mind as well, as I said, that our army's durability is not only how many wounds we can put on the table, but how quickly also we remove the opponent's army from being able to, to shoot at us. So uh, with the sigil of decay a bit out of the way, let's look at other ways to buff the range damage. And we have a lot of uh, handles to, uh, to turn on, a lot of dials to turn on to, to improve the, the range damage of us Plague Marines. We can modify our hit rolls, our wound rolls, or modify the opponent armor save. And what is modifying our hit rolls, we can uh, we can get the unit within reroll one aura from a nearby lord. Uh, Taliman plays a very big role in the in the range damage buffing. So he has the ability; he can give one unit a plus one to hit, 
and when he with this ability he helps them in this in the whole turn that they can do uh, sh shooting and, and fighting as I understand it. So plus one to hit from the Taliban with no need to roll or it's not psychic ability or anything that can be denied. And also we can add the Tollkeeper Relic for Taliban, which is really good. So you have that sixes, unmodified sixes to hit, uh, deal additional one wound roll. So basically you, you get exploding sixes for all the ranged weapons. So this is, will benefit the Blight Launchers, the Plasma Guns, etc. If you hit some sixes there, you, you, will be making, you could potentially be making uh, a, lot of, a lot of extra damage. And the, the things that modify the wound roll, you have the plus, plus one to wound stratagem, now eternal hatred, but it's quite co cost, costly, two command points, and this replaces the veterans of the long war that previously was costing one command point. Uh, of course, uh, it's, it will help your wound roll that the opponent is within one, the one uh, toughness, minus one toughness contagion, but typically for a range damage, Another unit uh, is needed to do this early in the game. So if you're shooting in turn one or turn round one or round two, you will probably not be so close with your Marines to, to apply the Contagion by themselves with only one or three inch range. So you would need maybe a fast unit like a, a 30 blow drone to go ahead and, and basically put, put stuff under minus one toughness for them to be shot at. Later in the game, most of the opponent's enemy should be within Contagion range. Uh, the Arch Contaminator trait, of course, uh, it, it helps Plague Weapons re-rolling all, all to, to wound, but only if they are shooting within 12 inches. And uh, the Bolters uh, can count as Plague Weapons with the Stratagem vir Virulent Rounds. Those two can be combined. And of course, the Sigil of Decay we just uh, covered, uh, bo boosting the Bolters only for 10 points. And uh, if to modify also the opponent Armor Save, we can use the inexorable uh, warlord uh, contagion trait the this contagion um when when the enemy is within a contagion and an inexorable unit attacks it in both ranged and melee uh, we can add uh, ap uh, we get one more ap to our uh, to our uh, yeah to the weapon profile so uh I, in, this, uh, in these tables, I've tried to summarize all the effects of these buffs uh, on the variety of Plague Marine weapons, assuming that we are a 12-inch range uh, shooting. So starting here, we have all the, the weapons here, uh, the, a Plague Marine with a boulder, Blight Launcher, etc. And here is the average damage, uh, basically the, the average from the 31 targets I've been choosing and, and showing. So it's basically giving me a flavor of the the total damage potential against a multitude of targets. And so here we can see the, the bolter in this, in, in my targets will be doing 1.2 wounds per 100 points, while the blight launcher will be three and plasma gun supercharged is three and a half, etc. Uh, and then if we add uh, the reroll ones to hit, we improve the weapons uh, damage. Uh, and down here you can see the percent effect increase. Of course, the reroll ones to hit don't help our auto hit weapons, the Plague Spear and the Plague Belcher. Um, the Taliban, uh, the plus one to hit, uh, does a significant improvement. So basically, it improves the weapons by 25%, except the auto hit weapons. And the Taliban Toll Keeper, the Exploding Sixes, for the Plague Marines, uh, at least it's equivalent also to 25% more, more wounds uh, being performed. The, the, the two uh, command points to get plus one to the wound roll um, also boosts basically all the weapons. Uh, it, it helps the, the low strength weapons more, like the Plague Belcher and the Bolter, um, but still you can see also it's, it's far from, for example, the the wound efficiency of the Blight Launcher or the, the Plasma Gun. Uh, but it's costing also two command points to use. Uh, putting the, the enemy in, in Contagion is, is also really good. Uh, it's again also uh, boosting the low strength weapons the most in percent. So we, we see the, the Bolter and the Plague Belcher get increased. And then the Arch Contaminator is helping the, the Plague Weapons. Um, if the Sigil of Decay gives 17% more damage to the Bolters, the Virulent Round also gives 17% more to the Bolters, 
and the inexorable uh, minus one AP, the, the AP boost is also helping uh, the bolters uh, the most, let's say. So uh, looking at the, the various buff we can apply, the Taliman seems like a very good uh, character here. So both his ability and his Relic Toll Keeper have good consistent improvements to, to, to all non-auto-hit weapons. And the two buffs, they stack together because you can have the Exploding Sixes and the plus one to hit, they don't, they don't interfere with each other. So, and, and also if we add the reroll Lord Aura here, that would be a very good combination for, for, for our shooting damage. The minus one toughness aura and the wound roll buffs help out as well. And the internal hatred is good, but now it's expensive for two command points. And the inexorable contagion um, benefits the low AP weapons the most. Uh, but and, and of course we can do, we can buff, but you can see here, you can, you can buff the bolter with a lot of this, this um, percentage improvements, but you will never uh, do it as as efficient as a blight launcher or a plague spewer or or a plasma supercharged the plasma gun so uh, if we look at the melee and close uh, engagement range damage what can we do to buff the 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 damage there apart from special weapons of course uh, we can boost uh, the grenades so basically with the biologus putrefier we increase the AP and the damage of our grenades. So if we have a nearby Periologus, where they can do a lot of damage in close range, the guy that throws the, the, the grenade does more damage. We can give them more attacks. For example, the Trench Fighter Stratagem for one command point gives our Plague Marines a plus one attack with the Plague Knives, potentially overwhelming an opponent with a lot of, uh, of, of Plague Knife attacks. Uh, the, the new stratagem Blightening for one command point uh, says that three models uh, can be selected in the army to shoot their grenades as a pistol six auto hit weapon in engagement range uh, in the shooting phase. So basically, if we have a, a, a Plague Marine unit locked in, in combat, we can use this, uh, this stratagem and then in the shooting phase, they can sh three of the guys can shoot uh, 18, 18 shots uh, with, um, and, and of course, if Biologus is close by, he will also be buffing the, their grenades here. And then we can, of course, also modify the hit rolls with three roll ones to hit by a nearby Lord and plus one to hit from the Tallyman. The Tally, he can select one unit. It's also helping the melee. We can modify the wound rolls. Uh, in, in the analysis I've been making so far, every time I look at the melee damage, I already include that the opponent is in minus one toughness aura. This will be true if we play the, the, mono, uh, the mono army only death guard. The arch contaminator trait, of course, re-rolling all to wound with plague weapons. This is really good for our melee damage because nearly all our melee weapons for the plague marines are plague weapons, so they will be directly improved by the arch contaminator minus the power fist of the champion. And the plus, plus one to wound stratagem again, the eternal hatred can help, but it's again two command points. We can also use the putrescent vitality psychic power, giving plus one strength and plus one toughness, but the strength also helps the wound roll. Uh, we can modify the opponent armor save again. The inexorable warlord contagion seems interesting. Adding AP, for example, to the plague knives wouldn't, it's really good to get them to a minus two AP. And then we can use the creeping blight Stratagem that is um, one for one command point and unmodified six to wound, the AP becomes four, and this is more interesting for the, for for example, a, a lot, lot of attacks from the plague knives. And now with Biologus Purifier, we can also add mortal wounds. Unfortunately, the Blades of Purifaction is gone, but Biologus has an ability called Foul Infusion. He can select one unit and, and mortal and this unit will be making mortal wounds on unmodified six to wounds uh, in in melee in melee uh, so with with plague weapons so this is this is really good I will show you the effect of this in a, in a moment and then the icon of despair for ten points uh, we can add it to the squad in our morale phase we can roll a d6 for each enemy unit in engagement range on a four plus we can give uh, one mortal wound. So uh, before I forget uh, yet another time, let's let's look at the grenades. 
so the grenades uh, work at the six inch range. And here I'm assuming that the toughness, minus one toughness aura is in effect. Um, and, and here we can see uh, the bolter, uh, the bolter standard uh, guy, two shots at six inches, makes this, this type of damage across the, the targets here. And then if we throw, uh, if, if we throw blight grenades, we see we get a better effect than the bolter. And especially if you have a guy with only melee weapons, like a, a guy with a flail or axe or something like this with dual melee weapons, uh, don't forget to, to shoot one grenade at least from, from, from this guy. Uh, when you are in close range um, before you do a charge, um, and then we can see uh, the, the 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 goldie line here is what happens with the blight grenade if we have the biologus nearby. So it definitely improves. Uh, it makes base basically the the grenade uh, increase the AP and makes it a damage too. So it's it's a can be a good buff, especially against the two wound targets here. But yeah, and so so we are doing. Um, consistently more damage with the blight grenades if biologus putrefier is close by and then we see the crack grenade you can only throw one grenade but it's stronger so if you are if you are close to charging a vehicle let's say then it's better to throw a blight grenade on a gladiator or a predator tank or something like this in victor war suit rather than shoot it with the bolter or just throw the normal blight grenade and here you see the blight launcher as a as a reference of the damage. So, yeah, biologus putrefier and the blight grenade gets quite buffed. And then uh, a table showing the, the 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 various buffs I was talking about before the their effect on the melee damage. Here we see the average damage per hundred points across the thirty one targets I've selected. Um, and here we see that the per, per 100 points, their average damage. And here you have for all the, the weapons of the Plague Marines. Uh, so we can see here um, the effect of re-rolling once to hit, the Talimans uh, plus one to hit, the Internal Hatred, the Arch Contaminator, the Inexorable minus one AP. And here we see the Biologus uh, Purifier, the ability to, to make mortal wounds on a 6-2 wound. Uh, basically, it improves a lot the the damage of the base the baseline guy with the plague plague knife and all the other weapons are improved. So you are getting a lot of extra mortal wounds uh, per hundred points with this ability. So I think this is really interesting to take for uh, to buff a melee squad um, a melee squad of plague marines. So here we see the the percentages the reroll wants to hit is a 17% improvement. Um, the, the the Taliban uh, plus one to hit is also helping a lot and especially uh, improving in percent better the weapons that have minus one to hit like the mace or the great, great uh, plague cleaver. And then um, the internal, uh, the, the plus one to wound also helps but it costs two command points. The arch contaminator helps across the board and the inexorable also helps but, but here for example, our Plague Knife already has one AP, so it's not as the same percentage boost as we had with, with the Boulder. But again, this combo uh, looks uh, quite quite good. And here you can see that the Flail of Corruption relative to the Plague Knife is almost uh, four times higher damage here. You can see the relative damage to the knife. So a double Plague Knife, of course, is 50% more because you get three attacks instead of two. And you see the Flail of Corruption four times more the Great Plague Cleaver three and a half times more. And then you can add buffs uh, correspondingly here. So uh, reaching to the point of uh, summary and final thoughts uh, uh, regarding the squad composition and the Sigil of Decay, I think, as I can see, the Sigil of Decay uh, only gives a little minor improvement on the bolters um, because it's only affecting the sixes, uh, getting getting the auto wound. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's, 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 and the, and the math suggests that you can build a stronger squad with special weapons. For example, already taking one blight launcher instead of the sigil of decay will be doing um, more for your, for your damage output for the same number of points. Keeping the same number of points with a standard squad, sacrificing, for example, one plague marine to add a couple of more special weapons, 
double the damage uh, ranged output compared to the to the sigil or the baseline um, standard squad so so basically sacrificing 10 percent of your durability one out of ten plague marines to add a couple of special weapons doubles your your damage output so i think that's a good trade-off of damage compared to the durability um so squad compositions and special special weapons considerations if you are going for the absolute highest durability squad then consider the old bolters and knives in order to build uh, squads uh, that that should be shooting at more mostly at range maybe they will stand on a backfield objective and just shooting then include at least light launchers plasmas are not as good as longer range because now they they can only double fire at 12 inches you can also make some shooty shooty in squads for medium and short range then you can consider spewers and meltas or, or plasmas of course work better in the in the medium range and the blight launcher works equally well at long range and and um, and and shorter range uh, and then for melee uh, oriented squads then you can of course uh, go for the flails and the cleavers and double knives and you can add the axe or, or some of the other mace and mace also would you can add but then they become quite an expensive squad but they can do a lot in melee uh, and you could also make uh, as i show also in my previous video you can make an all-round squad that of course costs a bit more than the standard squad but does better in both melee and uh, shooting if you add for example blight launcher and flail then you can add plasmas and and cleaver on top on top of this and for my collection, and uh, that's my suggestion to your collection, I, I will I will be looking to have an avail available various Plague Marines with various options. So already now I have multiple Blight Launchers and Flails, and now I'm painting up my, my cleavers to be able to use them, and plasmas, and some of the more fancy weapons. It's, it's always nice to have in your collection, and then you can uh, easier tailor uh, the squads of, of a game for your purpose, and then you can see yourself by using some of these special weapons and um, how how good or bad <laughs> maybe they are but in my in my opinion uh, every time i've never been disappointed to include a blight launcher guy uh, yet so uh, there are of course buffs on top of everything here there are a lot of buffs and a lot of synergies for for our death card that help both the standard and the special weapons and um, looking at at the Virion, and now that we had a little bit more time to study, and I already played my my first uh, trial game, I think some picture is starting to crystallize around those. The Taliman is really, really um, a great character that gives you command points in the battle, and um, he he's really good to buff, especially the range damage of our Marines. And and um, yeah, now it's almost for me an auto include, uh, in my opinion, uh, taking also the Tollkeeper Relic for Exploding Sixes. I hit Exploding Sixes on some Blight Launcher and some Plasma, and it was yeah really really nice to do this extra extra damage and take off uh, your opponent's um, infantry, for example, before they make damage to to our own guys. So so Taliman is really really a, a very helpful unit. And especially in the ranged uh, con range buffing role, he also can help buff in melee. But his specialize his speciality with the Tollkeeper relic is uh, definitely on the ranged uh, shooting. Biologus Putrefier then uh, seems like a very good candidate, uh, equivalently good, but in the role to buff the melee and the short range damage of our marines, basically the grenade boost um, and his mortal wounds in melee uh, with with uh, with with uh, extra weapons or knives or something like this can can do really a good good damage then of course we have uh, reroll ones arch contaminator inexorable the contagion of the inexorable adding ap and various stratagems i went through they can all buff uh, standard and special weapons as well increasing if further our our lethality on the battlefield and then the plague surgeon of course uh, by the six plus uh, feel no pain he increases the durability of our marines so that's his supporting role the foul blight spawn you know out of these uh, characters he he has the he adds the more firepower than the others and he helps the marines fight first if we take the relic so he could be a, a really nice to accompany uh, the um, our our marines for example a melee squad marines with biologus and foul blight spawn could be a very nice 
combination for a melee-oriented uh, marine squad and maybe include the plague surgeon in that to have uh, increased durability as, as your marines get shot. Uh, and then the Noxious Blightbringer, it's, it's the most underwhelming of the bunch of variants to bring buffs. He buffs the one inch movement. So if you put squads that go on a rhino, for example, a melee or mid short range oriented squad on a rhino, then that makes less point in bringing the Noxious Blightbringer. The Noxious Blightbringer could maybe help some of the uh, walking marines to come to the midfield and, and, and stay there and capture some objectives. So uh, this uh, concludes, uh, concludes the video. Uh, what do you think about, uh, about the, the Sigil of Decay and the buffs and, and the squads and the, and the special weapons? Are you, what is your uh, thought now with uh, the new um, the update in the, in the math here? Uh, if you like this video, please pl press like and uh, subscribe to the channel. It's greatly uh, helping and encouraging me to, to continue the, uh, the work. As you might understand, that it takes uh, a lot of time to do all the math and to analyze all these uh, various combinations uh, and to try to present it to you in as clear way as possible. So if you want to support my work uh, even further, you can uh, visit my Patreon uh, page. Uh, and uh, and basically yeah leave leave your comments below and uh, uh, stay safe out there and uh, bye bye